Well, it is bright and early. Uh, this is a Tuesday morning. I can't remember what this is, the 11th or the 12th. Um, we got out here about 6.30. Um, as you kind of recap of what happened uh, the other day is when we were adjusting the engine, um, one of the spring washers, the washer that goes on the rear mount uh, in between the felt washer and the rear mount on the engine got lost. I mean lost, it's disappeared, I don't know where it is. So I ended up being able to get another one yesterday uh, and so we're back on it today. And I tell you, losing that spring washer actually was a good thing because it showed us another problem that I did. I got in a rush, shouldn't have, and I screwed up. Um, the Mercruiser Mercathode um, uh, wire that comes from the underneath the trim, uh, the trim assembly or the, the transom is a black, uh, brown and an orange wire. Well, we had actually crushed the brown wire between the Y pipe and the transom assembly when I torqued down the Y pipe. So in searching for that screw, I discovered that and had to take the Y pipe off. If we hadn't lost that screw, we would have never known. I would have installed that whole engine and we'd have been in big trouble. So anyway, that's what I've been doing this morning. It's about 7.30 now. I fixed that wire, tested it, put heat shrink on it, made sure it was 100% okay, put a new seal on it, sealed it up good, and torqued down the Y pipe. So uh, now we're getting ready to drop the engine in, uh, hopefully for the final time. But uh, give you kind of a run through of what's going on so far. We've drilled the holes in the, uh, the mounts and they've also put down uh, uh, resin inside of it. So therefore it's you know nice and sealed. Uh, cleaned everything up real good. The problem we've been running into is that my power steering lines are still have fluid in them. And what they're doing is they're, they're constantly dripping stuff inside the bilge, my clean bilge. So it's been kind of irritating. The scary thing about that, that uh, washer being gone is did it flick somewhere dangerous? Like did it go inside the exhaust manifold and then when I start it up we're going to have a problem? I scoped it. I have one of those little special cameras that you can stick down in there that has a, cam uh, a camera on the end and a little video display on the other. I can't see anything in there but honestly it could have gone anywhere. Um, we've searched the grass, we've searched the alley, we've searched everywhere inside this boat and that sucker is gone. So what it's down to is it's good old Jay put it in my pocket and I put it down somewhere. That's what I'm kind of thinking. So anyway, today is the idea we're going to get this thing in here and get it aligned. That's the big thing. But as you can see, we got all the interior in. So when we ran into the problem last week, all we did is just switch gears and move on. That's what you got to remember. Don't let something get you down. Uh, and it was really getting us down. We were really angry. We were hot uh, on Saturday. So we just stopped and then came back on Sunday and we put the interior in. So I've got the seat uh, bases in and we did uh, the ski locker with 5200. Uh, we're going to try that instead of doing screws and then I'm going to use an invisible screw uh, hinge mechanism on the back there. But all the stuff is in as far as the trim pieces. It all looks really good. It just needs to be cleaned up. It's dirty from sitting in storage for six months or seven months, whatever we're at now. Um, and the, the gel coat seems to be holding up really well. I've dropped stuff on this, dropped tools, I dropped the steering assembly and it hasn't chipped. The only problem we have is that little spot right there and it's where it didn't stick. So I'm going to have to, to rough it up and there was, must have been something underneath it because it stayed soft or there was a booger in there or something. I'll rough it up and put another couple of coats right there just to touch it up. But uh, I mean you just you take a little bit of uh, cleaner, put it on there and any of this grease or anything like that that we're getting on it comes right up. But I tell you, it's freaking white. I mean really bright bright. And I guess that's, that's good. It's not going to be super hot, but you're going to have to wear your sunglasses during the, and of course we're putting down snap in carpet, so it's not going to matter, but it's definitely white. <laughs> so anyway, that's what we're doing today. I'm going to get back to work and I'll update you later. The engine is aligned. It took us uh, right at about two and a half, three hours maybe. I don't know what time it is now, but we started early this morning. Uh, what we kept running into is kind of a comedy of errors is that uh, you know you'd get it all aligned perfectly and then you'd tighten down another bolt and then all of a sudden it'd loosen it. We rotated the engine 90 degrees and then it was messed up. So you gotta, it takes a lot. You gotta rotate the engine, test it, rotate the engine, test it, tighten down all your bolts, test it, and it's just a matter of getting it just right. And it takes a lot of time and effort. I mean it's, you gotta think about it, there's a lot of physics involved. You know, maybe when I get a chance and I'm not so hot and sweaty and tired right now, um, I'll explain everything. Maybe I'll draw a picture or something like that to explain how the coupler in relation to the front engine mounts are. Because once you do it, it totally makes sense. But it's just until you do, I, you know, there was times at the very end I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this. One more turn and we had it. So just, yeah, yeah, and I was going the wrong direction one time. So 
Uh, anyway, it's done. It's taken care of. Uh, we got the boat covered up uh, to keep the heat out. Um, got the engine hoist set up there. We're going to run it back to the rental place and uh, come back and then we'll start plugging everything back up and uh, just, uh, you know, the typical things. Put the batteries in, install the trim pump, fill everything with fluids, you know, all that kind of good stuff. So anyway, that's where we are right now. Made good progress. The engine is in. It's nice and uh, easy to push the alignment bar in and out. We're good to go. I know I've gone over and made a video of this before, but I figured to show it to you again. Um, it is all done with the front engine mounts, not the back engine mounts. And you use the bottom bolt to lift or lower each side. And what you want to do is you want to look at how your, um, how your splines make marks on here. You want it equal all the way around. And you want it this easy. I'm barely pulling it in and out. It's that simple. It's that smooth. You don't want any binding whatsoever. And sometimes you have to actually take this and kind of bump it up and down or either direction to kind of adjust your gimbal bearing just a little bit. So that way it's in perfect alignment. But this is absolutely smooth as silk. I mean, I am very, very happy with that. Now we'll go retighten everything, make sure it's 100%, and then we'll check it again. And then if, it's, if it's out, then you got to readjust it. This is a very time consuming and uh, patience testing project. But that's how you want it, it's that simple. Once you're in the bearing, it just pops right in. All right, so we went to install the trim pump and uh, it was full of uh, basically oil and water, which we call milkshake. It was all inside here and it was just nasty. So I just scored some simple grain in there and started to wash it out and realized that the upper seal was leaking and it had all kinds of dirt and grime on this upper seal and it's actually in pretty good shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put some Vaseline on it and put it back in here and uh, hopefully that'll seal up our little problem that we had. I think it will because this is just too nice and uh, it's real easy to get this off. It just has a bolt that goes through the bottom that attaches to the bottom of your uh, trim assembly. So I'm just gonna take a little, little of this Vaseline and put it all around this O-ring here And then slide it on over here. Now first of all, I'm going to get my air blow off the water. Upside down. <laughs> now I gotta remember how it goes back on. Yeah, it has two little nipples that go on to locating spots on here, so you really can't put it in the wrong spot. And then, uh, Get our little screw, put a little Vaseline around that too, just to keep the rubber nice and soft. That's an eight millimeter socket. It's fun doing this with slippery hands. that works all right I wanted to show you guys the uh, how to use the shift cap uh, shift adjustment tool um, it's kind of baffling how you use it there's not a whole lot of instructions out on the internet but you can see that it's got this little uh, uh, post coming off here in the larger hole basically is you take your little there's another piece down on the out drive which down there what that does is you make sure that it's seated properly see how it moves out Make sure that it's seated all the way against that. And then you take your the rod 
and you insert it into the end of the cable and then you take this brass little ferrule here and you thread it out to where it fits perfectly into the end of this. So now this tells you, this is your measurement tool to, uh, to get it in. Now you basically just set it down in here, you take your thing off, just like that. Done deal. Well, it's very late at night. I say very late. It feels like it's about midnight. I've been up since, oh, 5 a.m. and uh, didn't get much, but about four and a half, five hours sleep last night. We've been working all day. Um, my dad just left, and uh, we are probably 98% there. Eh, 95, 98. He and I differ on that number. Uh, the gimbal alignment or the uh, alignment of the engine was kind of a whip in this morning. We got it done. It's taken care of. It's nice and easy going in and out. Um, got all the electric done, all this, the wires run, coarse exhaust installed with the exception of cutting the holes in the side. But uh, it's, it's definitely coming along. Uh, I tell you, we figured out a, something to kind of help us a little bit here is that we backed this boat right up to the garage door. And what that does until about four o'clock, it keeps the back, I'd say, third of the boat in the shade. So it allowed us to really work on it. We tried our hardest to get to the point where we can put the drive on, but we had just so much other stuff we had to take care of. It just, you know, it just, it just sneaks up on you. The details just absolutely get you uh, killed. So, <clears throat> all right, let me crawl in here, show you all the, the goodies, what we got done. The gel coat's really dirty right now, and I think that's just kind of something I got to deal with. Um, it's kind of hard to see. It is, but you can see how, how much dirt and stuff like that. This stuff wipes up. It's very, very simple. I'm still very impressed with how this turned out. My ski locker dried. It's all good to go. We got the batteries installed. Uh, all the electric is routed where it needs to go. I need to do a little cleanup back there to, to zip it up nicely. I gotta go to AutoZone, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go to uh, West Marine and get the, uh, the wire, but I gotta go to AutoZone to get some more zip ties because I'm out. But I need to extend the trim pump wires because they stop right there and they need to go to the battery. But you can see the courses are installed. I've got the wiring harness to those installed also. Uh, we tested them, man, they flip open quick. The Corsa exhaust, whenever it clicks, I mean, it goes bling, real, real fast. I mean, it, it jumps back. It doesn't like ran, 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 ran. It just flick and it's there. Got the uh, blower installed, trim pump installed. Um, we cleaned the trim pump valve. I actually took the whole bottom of the thing apart, cleaned it really good. I'm happy. Uh, got the uh, mercathode system reinstalled. Um, all the hoses put back on with the exception of this front hose, which is easy. Um, located the circuit breaker for the Corsa system, which, I mean, this Corsa system is a piece of cake to install. Um, basically, all you do is, is replace your elbows with these uh, new diverters, and then you run, it comes with this nifty little wiring harness right here, which has a 20 amp circuit breaker, and the power and uh, ground wire, and then you have a little switch that you put up on your uh, helm, and you flick the switch, turns it on, flick the switch, turns it off. Got both batteries routed. So all we need to do now is take the Corsa and route the exhaust out that way. Really won't be that big of a deal. It just got dark too soon. Um, so far, everything's going real smooth. All the battery cables are installed. Um, we're right up to the point where I need to put um, the drive on, shoot power to it, bleed the uh, trim pump, chest, test it up and down, and uh, go fill this sucker with oil out drive with gear lube and then put some gas in this thing. I had a dream the other night that I forgot to put gas in here and was trying to crank it and couldn't figure out why the dang thing wouldn't start. So anyway, that's where we are right now. Um, it's done, over with. I won't be able to touch this thing for a couple more days. Got a busy work, uh, work week ahead of me. So until uh, next time, thanks for watching guys. Talk to you soon.